Hello, curious learners. Today we are going to look at adding polynomials. When we take together those variables and terms and we add them together, and we'll, we'll work on that today. We're going to look at two different types of terms. First, we're going to start with like terms or like monomials. An example of that is 2a plus 3a. When we break that apart, it means 2a means a plus a. 3a means a plus a plus a. So as you can tell, when you add them all together like that, a plus a plus a plus a plus a, you'll get 5a. When you have like monomials or monomials with the exact same variable, you can add them together like this and join together those like terms to give yourself a more simplified term, like we did here. When you have unlike monomials, it looks like this. Let's say we have 5x plus 3y. Let's break this down. That means x plus x plus x plus x plus x. 5x's plus y plus y plus y, 3y's. You can't join these together because they're completely different. So we can't just add those numbers. There's no way to join them together. So this, because we can't join them together and they are completely different, it's actually going to stay as a binomial. It's going to stay as 5x plus 3y. That's as simplified as you can get. You can't join them together. They're totally different. They're totally separate and they need to be kept separate from each other. All right. So when we're adding polynomials, or adding monomials in this case, you need to have like terms. It's kind of like comparing apples to apples. Let me show you an example. If I have 3a plus 5g plus 2s, let's say that's three apples, five grapes, and two strawberries. Get it? A, G, and S. Apples, grapes, strawberries. A common mistake when people are first learning to do this is that they will do this. They'll just add up the numbers and join together the letters. This is a common makes, uh, mistake. And so I'm trying to explain it to you because I don't want you to do it. All right? So some people might just join the numbers together and put the letters together, but that doesn't make any sense at all. Right? We can't say three apples plus five grapes plus two strawberries equals ten apple grape strawberries, right? That doesn't make sense. So you, if you think about variables, kind of like you would think about fruit, vegetables, different things like that, it might help. When, you're ha when you have three apples, five grapes, and two strawberries, you can't just say you have 10 apple grape strawberries. You have to say you have three apples, five grapes, and two strawberries, okay? You have to keep them separated. It's exactly the same thing with like terms and unlike terms. All right? To add fruit, you need to add them, and they have to be the same. Does that make sense? Three apples plus eight apples equals 11 apples. Same with variables. 3a plus 8a equals 11a. They have to be the same if you're going to add them. You have to add fruit with itself, the same type of fruit. All right, so this example is going to help us as we move forward in the future to remember that like terms can join together, but they need to be exactly the same. We can't have one type of fruit and add it to another type of fruit and get more. Um, it's not really how it works. So here's the rule. <clears throat> if the terms are like, you can add the coefficients and keep the variables the same. Here's an example. If I have 5x plus squared plus 7x squared, my variable is exactly the same. My variable is x squared. So I can just add the numbers, the coefficients. 5 plus 7 is 12. So 5x squared plus 7x squared is 12x squared. That's how many x squareds I have. All right? And that's how we're going to work with this. If you have terms that are exactly alike, add the coefficients and leave the variable exactly how it is. That's the rule for adding them. Just like adding apples to apples. One more thing to remember about addition. 
is that the order does not matter. That's called the commutative property. It means you can move things around. So 5 plus 2 is the same thing as 2 plus 5. And the reason why this is important is because um, with binomials or polynomials of any kind, you can move things around. 3x plus 2x is the same as 2x plus 3x. All right? And, and I'll show you why that's important here in just a second as we start adding, um, adding these numbers together. So let's do it. We are adding together 2a plus 3. That's our binomial. That's our very first binomial. You can see that right here. And we're adding that to our second binomial, 5a minus 7b. That's our second binomial. So we're adding this one plus this one, or everything inside of this set of parentheses plus everything inside of this set of parentheses. And that's important. So here are the steps that we're going to follow. Number one, when you're adding polynomials, you can just get rid of the parentheses. So let's do that. Step number two is that you can move the like terms together. Now, you have to remember that negative signs move with the numbers. Then you can move them around, and that's what we talked about earlier. The order that you add things does not matter. So if you keep the negative sign with that negative 7b, you can move these around in any order you want, as long as that negative sign sticks with it. The reason that we do this is so that you can see we're joining the a's together and the b's together. See that 2a plus 5a, we've put them at the beginning, and then 3b minus 7b. So you can move them around so that the like terms are next to each other. Then you can just simplify by adding the like terms. 2a plus 5a gives us 7a. 3b minus 7b will leave us with negative 4b. Notice we can't do anything else. We can't join together 7a and negative 4b. We can't do that. But what we can do is join together all the A's together and join all the B's together. That's how we add polynomials. I'm going to give you an opportunity to practice this one. Here's another example. We're going to follow those same steps. What I'd like you to do is to go ahead and um, get some practice by pausing the recording, trying this one on your own, and then you'll see a full example of, of me solving it following the steps. All right, get rid of the parentheses. This becomes negative x plus 4y plus 8x minus 6y. We're going to move the like terms together. So I'm going to shift this 8x. I'm going to move that one over so that it's next to the x. So you'll see the x's are next to each other. Negative x and positive 8x are together. 4y and negative 6y. Notice that the negative signs stay with their term. Now we're going to simplify. Negative 8 plus, or negative x plus 8x will leave us with 7x, and 4y minus 6y gives us 2y. That's our final answer. You can't join together the x's and the y's, they have to stay separated but you can join together all of the x's together, all of the y's together. We're going to do one more practice question together. Here it is. ab minus ac plus negative 10ab plus 5ac. It's kind of a little bit complicated, so we'll start out by getting rid of those parentheses. That tends to make things look a little less complicated. Now we're going to move those terms together. To do this, I have to find the terms that are exactly alike. There's an awful lot of A's inside of this. But we can only join together like terms that are exactly the same. So I'm going to join together the AB here and this AB as well. So notice when I move them, my negative signs move with them. I have AB and negative 10AB. AB and negative 10AB go here. My negative AC and positive 5AC come together over here. 
So I'm joining together my like terms. I'm putting them close to each other so that I can simplify them. AB minus 10AB gives me negative 9AB. With this example, um, notice that there is no number there. I didn't address that before, but there is no number in front of this, AB. So it's implied that there's just one of them. All right, it's kind of like 1 minus 10 gives us negative 9. So that's something to, to keep in mind. And then the same thing with the, the next term, negative AC. It's like negative 1 plus 5 would leave us with a positive 4. So that would be the final answer for this practice question. One final challenge question that I have here, negative AB plus 2BC plus 4AC plus 6CD. Go ahead and pause the recording. Try and do this one on your own. So we're going to get rid of the parentheses. We're going to move together the like terms. Make sure that the negatives move together. Hmm. And then we're going to simplify. We're actually done with this one. None of these terms are like, all right? So this one here is kind of a funny one where all of the terms are completely different. Um, they have some parts that are the same, but they are totally different variables. So you can't join any of them together. This was a trick question, one that I hope you were able to do correctly, all right? I also want to add one note here is when you're putting um, polynomials in order, when you're putting these terms in order, usually you, you, put, you start with the highest degree polynomial. And if, if you need to check out the degrees of polynomials, um, that's a different lesson. But you put the highest degree first, but then you order them alphabetically. So oftentimes you'll see um, variables just ordered alphabetically. So you can see that in this example, um, negative a, b, a, c, B, C, and C, D. I just put them in order alphabetically. That's just a standard way of writing them. Normally the X's come before the Y's.